Hi guys, welcome back to Fragments of a Simple Life, where every video I make is super simple. Today I thought we would go through the practical encyclopedia of cakes and cake decorating. This is a book that I've shown on this video before. My husband bought this for me, uh, I think at like a library, like used book sale for like a dollar or something, I don't really remember. But it's Classic Celebration Novelty and Party Cakes. The Complete Guide to Essential Techniques, over 200 recipes, and over a thousand photographs. We started going through this, like I said, a while back ago. I think in like October or something. And I haven't gone through it since with you guys. But it's humongous and we never finished going through it. This book is um, old. <laughs> it's pretty old. It was published in 1999. Here's the table of contents. We have basic cake recipes, basic icing recipes, covering cakes. We have classic cakes, tea time treats, special occasions, cakes for entertaining, seasonal celebrations, animal cakes, fun and games, and children's party cakes. Now up here I have a little post-it that you can't see. There it is marking where we last left off I think so I'm gonna just flip to that and I'm gonna take my post-it out and we can kind of just I guess pick up where we left off which was with this sticky gingerbread loaf I thought we could look at some of the pictures and if I see something that I like I will actually stop on that page and I will read the um, directions or what the ingredients list is. We have an Irish whiskey cake right here. It's a loaf cake. It says this moist, rich fruit cake is drizzled with whiskey as soon as it comes out of the oven. So it's like a drunk cake. You can see all the little pieces of fruit right inside of it. It definitely looks like a fruit cake. Over here we have a banana lemon layer cake. And here's a picture of it all done. I'm not sure about banana and lemon flavor put together. Um, to me personally, that kind of sounds bizarre. As someone who does bake, I, I don't think I've ever heard of it. But it says, banana loaf is a favorite tea, bread, or snack. Here is its more sophisticated cousin. This moist banana and walnut cake is deliciously complemented by a tangy lemon butter icing. So the cake on the inside is what's banana and the icing is what's lemon. I'm trying to imagine it in my mouth, but it doesn't sound good to me personally. Mm, more fruit and cream. A genoa. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure. It's a sponge cake that can be used as the base for both simple and elaborate creations. A peach jelly roll. This looks like something that you could buy at the store. Obviously the preserves inside are peach. And you can see right there, using like a parchment paper, they spread the jelly in it and then roll it and try not to get it to crack, the outside to crack. It's kind of hard. You have to cook the sponge cake just perfect. That's why I've never attempted it. Ooh, Queen of Sheba cake. Look at that. Wow. Okay, let's read the ingredients for this one. First it says, this rich chocolate and almond cake is so moist it needs no filling. It is wonderful for entertaining as it can be made in advance and stored well wrapped in the refrigerator for up to three days. The ingredients is two thirds of a cup of whole blanched almonds, lightly toasted. I'm guessing you could probably do that in the oven. Half a cup of super fine sugar and a fourth of a cup of all purpose flour. Eight tablespoons or half a cup of unsalted butter softened and five ounces of semi-sweet chocolate melted. You need three eggs separated, meaning separating the whites 
from the yolks, as well as two tablespoons of almond liqueur, optional. It says it's optional. For your chocolate glaze, which makes it look so pretty, you need three-fourths of a cup of heavy cream, eight ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, chopped, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, two tablespoons of almond liqueur, again optional, and chopped toasted almonds to decorate, which is what the side is. Looks delicious. It's a very thin cake. It almost looks like a tart. Oh. A Satcher Tort. Um, it says that it's one of the world's finest and most famous cakes. It's dark and delectable chocolate cake. Serve in tiny slices. Look how cute. With a little swirl decoration here. It does look like a little tiny piece. I bet because it's so rich. It calls for semi-sweet and bittersweet chocolate. That's going to be a lot of chocolate. It looks like a perfect um, dessert. If, you have, if you're having someone over that loves dark chocolate... It seems like that is what that's for. Whoa, Mississippi mud cake. Talk about dark chocolate. It says there are many versions of this cake, but all of them are based on a dark cocoa-based chocolate. That's why it looks so dark. A lot of people don't know that cocoa can come like regular, like the cocoa powder. It can come regular and dark, and I think it can even come like extra dark. And I'm not sure on that, but yes, it comes in different amounts of darkness which is going to make stuff taste different but it says it's a dark cocoa paste chocolate cake that's meant to be reminiscent of the muddy shores of the mississippi river interesting we can see the two layers here getting filled and then they put like a vanilla cream on top and then it looks like coconut shavings interesting Strawberry cake. That's cute. I wonder what's on the sides. Almonds, more almonds. This looks very uh, vintage. It almost kind of looks British to me. Whoa, I don't even know how to say this. A Kugelhof? I might be saying that wrong. Because we all know that I can't read. Well, I can, but I don't do well with foreign languages. I'm such a typical American. It says, guaranteed to rise to the occasion. It's a fruit and nut bread. That looks as good as it tastes. It's very pretty. Isn't that pretty? Like a bundt pan. Really pretty. A fruit and nut cake. Whoa, look at that. I think I've seen this one before, probably in this book. It looks like little fingernails to me. I'm not trying to be mean, but it really does. Have you guys ever had fruitcake for Christmas? I never have. I've heard so many bad things. It's such a runny joke that I've never actually gotten a fruitcake for Christmas. Okay, we left the fruit cake, <laughs> fruit and cake area. And now we've moved on to tea time treats. It says, here you will find a tempting array of cakes to enjoy with morning coffee or afternoon tea, featuring popular classics from around the world. It's probably some words I can't say. From light sponges, chocolate brownies, and jelly rolls to delicious meringues. This chapter includes indulgent cakes for all tastes. Let's have a look, shall we? First up, we have a chestnut cake. It's an Italian specialty, it says. It's rich, moist, and heavy. It can be made up to a week in advance. That's good to know. It looks like it calls for flour, salt, some butter, three-fourths of a cup of sugar, Interesting. A 15 and a half ounce can of chestnut puree. I've never seen chestnut puree in my life. Also rum and heavy cream. Wow. It's really pretty. Just not sure what to 
think of the chestnut puree. Maybe that's something you can make yourself if you can't find it to buy it. A crunchy topped Madern Madeira cake. Huh. Traditionally served with a glass of Madeira. That's how you say it, right? It's a type of wine. In Victorian England. Ooh, fancy. This light sponge cake still makes a perfect tea time treat. It almost looks like a pound cake, doesn't it, on the inside? It's not just my camera. It's really, really yellow like a pound cake on the middle. That looks good. I'd probably eat that. I like almonds. I like anything that's kind of pound cake. If I'm not going to eat chocolate, then I'm probably going to go for something like that. Ooh, that looks weird. It's probably hard to see on my camera, but this looks like there's spaghetti on top of it. I know what it is. It's like toasted coconut for the topping. Two cups shredded coconut, honey, and butter. So that on top is butter, honey, and two cups of shredded coconut. It does kind of look like spaghetti. Banana coconut cake. Hmm. A coffee morning cake. Do you think they call it a morning cake because there's bananas and coconut? You're like, it's breakfast. There's bananas and coconut. It's still like a cake. <laughs> Almond and apricot cake. This is beautiful. I would eat this. Not sure how I feel about the almonds or the apricots inside, but almond cake is so good. So delicious. It looks like you make it with, whoa, this is interesting. Four or five tablespoons of fine, dry white bread crumbs, butter, super fine sugar, eggs, self-rising flour, milk, ground almonds, a few drops of almond extract, and a pound of fresh apricots that have been pitted in half, sifted super fine sugar to decorate, breadcrumbs, breadcrumbs. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. That's interesting. Upside down pear and ginger cake. Isn't this pretty? I don't know why, but this cake just looks like one of those things that you'd make if you're trying to impress your mother-in-law. Like, look what I made. It's really pretty. One stage Victoria sandwich. What? What? Okay. Interesting. Originally made in an oblong shape, today's Victoria sandwich is made using a variety of different flavorings and decorations. And it's baked and cut into all sorts of shapes and sizes. Use this basic recipe to suit the occasion. So it's just showing you how to do it in a bunch of different ways. And then it's giving you the examples here. Interesting. It's just self-rising flour, salt, butter, sugar, and eggs. Really, really, really simple. And then you do whatever you want with it. Hmm. Carrot and almond cake. Whoa, that looks like an almond cake on the inside, but it's so orange. Look at, look at, look how orange. I don't like carrot cake very much. Don't come for me, guys, if you do. It looks really cute, though. They did, like, some little fondant fake carrots here with a little something sticking out. I don't know what they made that out of. Can't tell. Marzipan, I guess. And then a whole bunch of powdered sugar. Looks like carrots, but also snowing. Uh-oh. A flourless fruit cake. We're gonna not. It looks like a Christmas uh, celebratory cake of some kind, like a wreath for your door. It almost kind of looks burnt too, but I know that's just the mix of fruit and uh, probably some nuts as well. I just can't do it. It looks like meatloaf, if you guys know what meatloaf is. It looks like someone took meat, meatloaf and put it in a cake pan and then they cut up some gummy bears and put it on top. That's just my opinion and I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> That's why I've never had one. A vig, vegan chocolate gateau. Looks pretty. Looks like something my husband would eat. 
a lemon and apricot cake. Whoa, that has a lot of fruit and nuts in it. That's a little bit too much for my liking. But I love lemon cake though. Last year for my birthday, I was in England and my father-in-law and his wife, they had a, a gluten-free lemon cake made for me. Ah, it was really beautiful. Gooseberry cake. Never had a gooseberry before. What do gooseberries taste like? Is that a real thing? Chocolate mint filled cupcake. Now this is really simple. Probably a good birthday recipe. Guys, it looks like meatballs. Do you see this picture on the right? This autumn cake. That looks like meatballs, does it not? Like here is a plate of meatballs with some Parmesan cheese on top. It's not. That's not what it is. It's fruit. It looks like meatballs. Carrot cupcakes. Okay, they're really cute. Not my favorite, but they're really cute. Almond and raspberry jelly roll. Cute. I've never tried to make a jelly roll. I just watch them on TV and I know when it cracks, everything goes to hell. Fudgy glazed chocolate brownies. Yum. These kind of don't look like brownies though. These kind of look like homemade like um energy bars or something. You know what I mean? It looks like they're made out of like almonds and dates and chocolate and like that's it. I'm not gonna lie. I usually don't make brownies from scratch. It's usually the one thing that I just go to a box mix for. Um, I mean you can alter the brownies a hundred different ways like if you take some cream cheese and a little bit of powdered sugar and you blend it with just like a hand mixer then you take a box um a brownie mix and you scoop uh the spoonfuls of the cream cheese mixture on top of the brownie mix like in the pan then you just take like a fork or knife and you cut through it like in a zigzag pattern Bada bing, bada boom, you just made cream cheese and uh, brownies all mixed together. Then when you bake it, it's going to taste like cheesecake. It's going to taste like um, cheesecake brownies. Like it's delicious. You can do the same thing with peanut butter. You can add a little bit of almond extract to the brownie mixture without altering the baking time. You can add a little vanilla so that they taste more homemade. You can sprinkle them with powdered sugar when they're done or add walnuts to them um so yeah brownie mix is the one thing that i just buy for a dollar <laughs> this is really pretty hazelnut chocolate i guess like nutella meringue tort with pears it's beautiful this is all pear and then the drizzle of the hazelnut chocolate on top Wow. It seems like the meringue would fall apart from the moisture of the pears. Pear and cardamom spice cake. Oh, that's pretty. They did the same thing. Is this kind of old fashioned? I don't know, but it's really pretty. I'd probably try that. I like pear. I like pear and I like apple. Um, baked. Spiced honey nut cake. Whoa. What is all over it? It's shredded lemon zest and cinnamon sticks. This this recipe calls for dried breadcrumbs too. Super fine sugar, four eggs separated, grated zest and juice of one lemon, pistachio nuts, dried breadcrumbs, half a cup, one lemon, six tablespoons of honey, one cinnamon stick and a tablespoon of brown brandy. This doesn't even call call for flour. It's flourless. Breadcrumbs instead of flour. Saint Clement's marbled crown. It does look like a crown, like something that would go on someone's head. It looks like they have these what are they called? Dragees. Little almonds and they have like little, little sour ones too and then this is like candied fruit. Looks like oranges and lemons. 
Very fancy. Caramel frosted gingerbread. Ooh. I'm not a big fan of gingerbread, but this looks very pretty for like a, a wintertime treat. And then this on top is dry coconut. So you have gingerbread, like the cake. The top is caramel or caramel, however you choose to say it. And then this is like coconut on top, shredded coconut. That seems like a lot of flavors in your mouth at once, doesn't it? Fig, banana, and Brazil nut tea bread. So this is going to be in a loaf pan. Look how pretty they're placing the figs. So it makes like a really beautiful design. This one calls for ground pumpkin pie spice. Huh. Brown sugar, dark rum, bananas, dry figs, Brazil nuts, flour, baking powder. Interesting mix of flavors. Fig, banana, pumpkin pie spice, and rum and brown sugar. It sounds really rich. Chocolate banana cake. That looks weird to me. Self-rising flour, cocoa powder, light brown sugar, two tablespoons of malt extract, and a golden or light corn syrup, eggs, milk, sunflower oil, and two bananas. Huh. It looks dense. It almost looks like an almond cake. Very, very dense. Like no air. Chocolate and orange, angel cake, chocolate and orange are classic flavor combination. Not my favorite fl um, flavor combination, but very well known. Looks like you take some egg whites. They're definitely beating the air into the mixture right there. I'm guessing it's probably looks dense, but probably feels very light in texture, like in your mouth. Aw, oh, decorated cupcakes. So this just gives you a simple, basic recipe. It calls for unsalted butter, sugar, flour, salt, baking powder, milk, and vanilla extract. Literally just the simplest, simplest vanilla cupcake. And then you can do whatever you want. This looks very interesting. Little eyeballs up here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but see the little eyeballs like eyelashes like her eyes are closed that's cute though that's a very simple vanilla cupcake nectarine amaretto cake mm, i don't like amaretto it looks really pretty though look at the glistening nectarines nectarine is my favorite fruit i might give it a try just for that but i've never had nectarine in anything cinnamon apple cake yum it's a spiced Genoese sandwiched with a mouth-watering filling of apples and soft cheese. What? Apples and cheese do, do go together. It makes for a lovely cake on an autumn tea party. Or for an autumn tea party. Cheese? What kind of cheese? It doesn't even say. It just says one and a half cups of a low-fat soft cheese. So cream cheese? Is it cream cheese? I love a cinnamon apple cake. I remember taking home ec when I was in like seventh grade and we made cinnamon apple cake. It was my favorite, but I'd never put cream cheese in it. An almond, a coffee, almond flour gateau. Hey, it's for me. Gluten free. Look at the espresso beans. Yum. That's cute. It just looks like it's going to taste really strong. Like, do you think having a cup of coffee with a coffee flavored cake is too much coffee? I feel like it would be to me. Summer strawberry shortcake. A summertime treat served with a cool glass of pink sparkling wine for a truly refreshing dessert. Yum. That looks really pretty. It looks like a really humongous biscuit, right? It's flour, baking powder, salt, sugar, butter, milk, heavy cream, and then, of course, strawberries. 
Yeah, I would probably try that, but gluten-free version. Spiced Easter cake. What makes it spiced? What's in it? Cinnamon. Zucchini. What? Brown sugar. Almonds. Orange zest. Whole wheat flour. Huh. And then the topping, the icing is just uh, soft cheese, which I think they mean cream cheese. Soft cheese and a teaspoon of honey. I don't know about that, guys. Banana gingerbread. I don't like things that are gingerbread. That does look like banana bread, though. Like, if you told me it was just banana bread, I would eat it. But I don't like gingerbread flavoring. I love banana bread, though. So good. Oh, gosh. There's more banana. Banana and apricot Chelsea blends. Look at that. They're like cinnamon rolls or what we call in the States cinnamon rolls, but made out of banana and apricot. They're filling it with banana and apricot. Huh. The filling is just one banana, one cup of dried apricots, and two tablespoons of light brown sugar. That sounds so sweet. Oh my gosh. Chocolate and banana brownie. That is thick. That is crazy dense. Holy moly. Looks good though. I'd eat it. They used oat bran. They used oat bran instead of, um, no, they used flour too. Self-rising flour and a cup of oat bran. Equal parts self-rising flour and oat bran. Huh. Okay. Interesting. This is beautiful. White chocolate brownies with milk chocolate macadamia topping. This is really beautiful. And I love how it's cut like thin pieces of a pizza. A little wedge. Flour. Baking powder. A pinch of salt. Six ounces of a fine quality white chocolate chopped. Super fine sugar. Unsalted butter. Two eggs. Lightly beaten. Vanilla extract. Semi-sweet chocolate chips. And the topping is... Milk chocolate, chopped, unsalted macadamia nuts, chopped. That looks beautiful. This will probably be our last one. This is a marbled chocolate peanut butter cake. It says this cake cannot be tested with a skewer because the peanut butter remains soft in the center. Rely on fingertip method. Cake should spring back when touched after 50 to 60 minutes. So it looks like you churn the butter, peanut butter and the sugars until creamy and then you add your eggs. And then in a medium bowl, you stir together the flour, baking powder and salt. Of course, that's called your wets and your dries for anyone who does not bake. You have to do your wets and your dries separate and then you bring them together. It says pour your batter into a bowl and stir melted chocolate. That's what they did over here in step one that I skipped. So they're adding their milk chocolate here. And then they're using a small or large spoon. And they drop the chocolate inside and then they're just swirling it with a knife. Kind of like I said with the brownies with the cream cheese in it. You just swirl it with a knife. And then here they're preparing the glaze while it, while it cooks. Yum. All right, you guys, that was our last one. Our next stop when we do this book again will be special occasions. And you can see their examples of cakes for all different special occasions. We'll see what they consider to be a special occasion back in 1999, the next time that we read this together. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. If you want to see more from me, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!